Hey guys, Anthony here with my initial review on the Goal Zero Yeti 400 solar generator. We're going to start right off with what you get with this unit when you purchase it and what comes with it uh, right out of the box. So right out of the box you're going to get the AC wall charger uh, which is here and that's in two pieces. So you'll just plug one piece into here and then use that for your AC outlet. Uh, you get the Goal Zero Yeti 400 generator, which is pictured here. That's the Goal Zero generator. And you get this Legacy Nomad adapter that uh, is used for the older um, Boulder solar panels. It's like an adapter that attaches to the solar panel and then goes into the power port. On the newer solar panels that you're going to get with this unit, if you buy the solar panels now, uh, you won't need that, but it's good to have it in case you have the older panels. Uh, right across the front of the unit here that you see, um, this is uh, your, and I'm going right off the paper here, the directions. This is your charging port, your input. So here's where your power port's going to go or your solar panels. Um, charging indicator light which what you see here when you press that button the display light goes on for a time and then it shuts off um, that's your display button <clears throat> then next you have your two AC outlets okay in pure sine wave nice clean power you have two USB outlets here outlined in red it's nice and Goal Zero has it very organized on the front panel very easy to see and recognize what these things are and then your um, 12 volt car port which is similar to your 12 volt volt car adapter <clears throat> and then your 12 volt 6 millimeter port which uses and accepts Goal Zero related products uh, like the Light of Life and some other things that they uh, other products that they make okay so that's the uh, basic unit you're going to get out of the box that's basically what it's going to look like again it's um it's 10 inches by 8 by 8 and it's 29 pounds okay guys you say to yourself now i have the goal zero yeti 400 uh, what does it power what can i use it for um, so depending on what your needs are like i said i have the goal zero yeti 150 which is the smaller version of this and I felt that I needed to bump up uh, to the larger unit because of where I live in South Florida, because we're susceptible to hurricanes and we frequently get power disruptions here. So I thought that the larger battery would serve me well and now I have two. So just to give you guys an example, the Light of Life uh, lantern that uh, Goal Zero puts out, this Goal Zero Yeti 400 will power that for 130 hours it'll give your smartphone 30 plus recharges off one battery um, a tablet 10 plus recharges a DVD player between 14 and 17 hours of playtime 2 to 17 hours for a laptop up to 50 watts a radio or stereo for 7 hours a desktop computer up to 100 watts three to three and a half hours, a 90 watt printer, one and a half hours, and a 32 inch LCD TV, two to three and a half hours. And again, it's depending on the wattage demands of the unit of the products you're putting on here. But if you see just from that short list that I just read, with this unit, you're basically pretty much set between lighting and charging and powering or powering up small devices up to and including a TV set, which in an emergency is very good to, to know you have that capability without turning on a gas generator. Again, this generator is, the way it sounds now is the way it sounds when it's on, silent. And your power is silent here and it's safe to use indoors, which is critical. If you're in a bug out situation, say in a, in a cabin or a tent um, or in your vehicle. 
Again, when you unpack your box, you're going to see this little orange card that grabs your attention and it basically tells you, charge me now. They want to prevent um, battery failure, so you, when you get the unit, you are to plug it into an AC outlet and charge it up. And so you would just get your charging cable port, which is here, plug in your AC outlet into a wall socket, put it into the input, input of the, the Goal Zero Yeti, and you'll see it come on and you'll see the power begin to come into the unit and you'll see the battery level blinking that it is getting, in fact, getting power. And so that's one of the things you want to do. Charge me now. Um, the LCD battery display basically has five segments to it, a 20%, 40, 60, 80, and 100% capacity. And that's what you're seeing here. When it's in solid color, it's fully charged. So right now this is topping off it's almost, it's above 80% charged. There's no demands on the unit, which there's no output coming out. And you'll see how that plugging in a device affects that, that when we get to that. So you have very good, clear, concise uh, readings on this um, unit. Very easy to understand it. Once your Yeti is fully charged, all the battery segments will be lit and remain solid. Okay. Now, Charging from solar. If you're charging this from a solar panel, this port would be from your solar panel, and then you would be getting the power from the sun. And again, the example here is two 20-watt Nomad panels would take about 20 hours to recharge this battery from the sun if it was fully discharged. Okay? And we'll get into how this is charged from the sun in other videos. Today, I just want to go over the actual functioning and the highlights of this battery. For, for those of you that have bought it and those of you that are thinking of getting one, um, so you know a little bit more about it. One of the nice things about um, this unit or the Yeti 400 units is, I will turn it around here and show you here is your 12 volt uh, battery uh, chaining port. So you can chain multiple Yeti 400s together to double or triple your power needs, uh, which is a good thing if you plan on expanding. You can grow uh, with this system, which I like. <clears throat> okay, so Again, we mentioned this cable. When you're using the older, bolder panels, you'll need this as your adapter. And again, your, your unit comes with one of these. It's the four millimeter to eight millimeter solar adapter. I don't know if you could see that in the video, but there it is. Okay. Okay, here's a little bit more of a closer view of the unit while I go through the uh, manual here. Uh, again, what to power from your Yeti? Well, again, it gives you some ideas. From the USB ports here, uh, you could go with M3, MP3 players, smartphones, digital cameras, e-readers, tablets, etc. Those items taking USB. And again, that activates as a button on top of each one of the input areas that activate that area when you're charging. So. If you're plugging an AC in, you'd activate it first and then plug in your device. Same thing for USB and the same thing for the 12 volt. Okay. 12 volt, you're gonna use uh, things you would use in your car. Uh, same thing in your car, the Goal Zero lights, car adapters, etc. For the AC, uh, you got laptops, a CPAP machine, display monitors, appliances, and TVs. Uh, for your AC, just like you would do in a wall outlet, but again, looking at the power needs of that item. Um, again, like I just showed you here, as you press and activate each one of these, the power light comes on saying that that is now ready for to accept a device. If you're experiencing shorter run times, you may want to check the device's power requirements. Again, I mentioned that earlier. In a cold weather climate or usage, if you're up north and you have one of these, and it's below freezing, they're asking you to 
place the Yeti 400 in an insulated cooler and then hook it up to keep the battery warmer uh, so it functions better. Uh, the LCD display gives you a lot of information. Excuse me. Okay, so let's, uh, let's plug something into the device. I'm going to plug in my cell phone. Uh, many of you that get these units, will that's what you'll be using it mostly for uh, initially and on a day-to-day -day basis. So I, I activate uh, the light showing the USB is now ready to accept it. Uh, this is my cell phone, uh, iPhone 5C. But again, it has the Goal Zero little USB regulator that I did a video on the other day that kind of regulates the power to your device. And so I plug it in here, and now you will see the wattage change. There is output wattage going down on my phone right now. And it's registering four watts, and you see it going from three to four. So my phone is now charging from the Yeti 400, which is in the wall. If I unplug it from the wall, It's still functioning. There's no input it's showing here. There's no input from solar or AC, but it is charging my phone through the battery, the internal battery. And there we'll plug it back in again. And now you see the input starting to flow again, that it's receiving current and the battery is charging, okay? The output section on the right side of, this, of the display indicates the amount of power your devices are pulling from the Yeti. This information can be displayed in amps, volts, watts, uh, amp hours or AH, and watt hours, WH. And again, you can press and hold uh, the display button and you could cycle through those. Um, I'm not gonna do it now, but you could cycle through those and what you want to display. Right now we have watts displaying. Um, to efficiently monitor your power usage, reset the, w the watt hours and amp hours after you fully charge the Yeti. The Yeti uh, remembers and uh, displays the power usage over the lifetime of the Yeti. So what you could do is when you initially charge this up, you'll clear it off of everything and then start it fresh again. That's basically what that means. Um, there are some uh, symbols that come up if you're having trouble with the unit like a battery fail symbol a blown fuse symbol I'll try to show it to you here right here low battery symbol temperature warning AC inverter fail okay again use these booklets I, I use this booklet I usually go through it read them highlight them before you start using your um, Yeti Again, it's a pure sine wave inverter, as you can see here, uh, meaning that it um, provides the cleanest power to your devices. And the, the, the manual will explain that in more detail. Um, so guys, again, you'll need an Anderson chaining cable that you could get from Goal Zero if you wanted to chain multiple Goal Zeros together. Um, and again, some stats on this. Um, if you plug this unit into the wall and the battery was fully discharged, it's going to take about five hours to recharge. About 13 hours from your car if it was fully discharged. Um, from a 20 watt solar panel, 40 to 80 hours. From a 40 watt panel, 20 to 40 hours. From a Goal Zero Boulder 30 panel, 26 to 52 hours from a Nomad 100 watt panel, eight to 16 hours. Again, I never let my battery go down to, to zero, so when I'm recharging, it's usually fairly quickly, even from the solar panel. Um, it's an AGM lead acid battery contained in this unit. Um, again, they, they say if you can't keep it plugged into the wall, Plug it in and charge it every three months, but they recommend you keeping it plugged in all the time if you can, which I do. Um, it's got hundreds of life cycles or battery cycles in it. It has no fuses. 
It's got uh, the USB port is 5 volts up to 2.1 amps with a 10 watt max and that's regulated. The 6 millimeter ports which are here are for Goal Zero products. Again, 12 volts up to 10 amps, 120 watt max. The AC inverter outputs of 60 hertz, pure sine wave, 110 volt, 2.6 amp, 300 watt continuous, 600 watt surge max. Uh, the weight, again, I stated, I think in the beginning of the video is 29 pounds or 13.2 kilograms. Dimensions are 10 and a quarter by eight inches and by eight inches. Okay, and guys, that's mostly the um, general overview of this unit. Um, if you have one and you uh, feel free to comment on what you use it for and uh, why you bought it. If you're thinking of getting one, I highly recommend. Uh, obviously, if you can afford the, the Yeti 400 at a, a price tag of about $459, um, surely go with it. Uh, they're not cheap, but they're very well made and they can save you uh, from a lot of heartache in a downtime situation. The Yeti 150 is about 200, sometimes 200 and change. Sometimes you find it under $200. And again, to start out with, I think it's a great unit. I still have mine and we've been using it for well over a year. Functions flawlessly and it's helped us on numerous occasions and it's very easy to transport. So again, guys, this is the Goal Zero Yeti 400 general overview. I will be doing more videos showing this unit in, in other situations, but I wanted to get this up out there uh, today, uh, giving you guys some understanding on what it does, how it works, some of the features, and also the benefits of having something like this. Again, clean power. No gas needed, no un, uh, no deadly fumes given off, um, which often kills people during a SHTF scenario or a disaster uh, when they run generators inside their house. This you will not have that problem. Nobody will hear you running it. Nobody will come knocking on your door looking to steal it because they won't even hear it running. That's one of the benef another one of the benefits of having a solar type generator like this. Thanks, guys, for watching. Please send me questions, comments. Um, and again, if you have one, some of, the, some of what you use it for and some of, it, some of how it has saved you um, over the years or over time. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay ready. Anthony signing off.